Hey everyone, my name is Julian of Julian Creates and welcome to the Soul Alone for ME 2018 View C, which are the Hollywood Waist Tapered Trousers found in my newest Nomi pattern. I'm doing this version. Um, especially, I have always loved a mid-century men's fashion and some of the details that you find there. So really taking it a little bit in a different direction, focusing on changing the ratio, going with the high-waisted pants, where it hits at your natural waist um, and not normally where we wear our trousers currently, which is usually on top of our hip bones. It's going to be a really interesting um, pattern and a really interesting to your wardrobe, giving you a nice tailored look. So let's get started. So before we get started in going into really creating this pattern, So before we get started really creating this pattern, one thing I want to note is looking at the sizing for the pants. Now remember, these pants sit higher than your normal pants that you would get, which sits usually on top of your hip bones. This one goes to your natural waist. So kind of where if you try to do a little teapot and bend at your waist, um, that where that indentation is, that's where it will sit. Mine's is um, a little bit under my belly button. So you wanna pay close attention to that. One great thing about this pattern is that the sizing is marked uh, for the waistline for the finished garment measurements on your pattern. So for me, what I decided to do is I decided to go up a size to a size 50 to accommodate my waist because I've been eating a little bit. Um, but just that is something to pay attention to. So though you, um, you might see all of the different sizing, on your actual pattern here, I decided for me, it might be best to go up a size. So just something to check out before you get deep into cutting your pattern. In order to make you see the tapered high-waisted pants, the pieces that you will need are number 10, which is the front, you will cut two. Piece 15, which is the back, you will cut two. Pieces 11 and 12. So you have your pocket facing as well as your yoke front, which is also part of your pocket. You will cut two of your fabric. You'll need pieces 13 and 14, which are part of your zipper assembly. You will cut one of 13 and one of interfacing. And of 14, you will cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. Next, you will need pieces 16, 17, and 18. These are part of your back welt pocket. So this is your welt, your back pocket facing, as well as your back pocket. Of 16, you will cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Of the back pocket facing, you will cut two of your regular fabric. And of 18, this is to cut two out of linings, for this is for your pocket bag. Nineteen and twenty. These are part of your um, facings for your waist. So this is cut one of fabric, one of interfacing for each. And finally, you will need piece twenty-one. And you will cut one of fabric. This is for your belt loop carriers. Now, if you are working on the wide leg versions, you will cut piece 22, which is your front of your wide leg pants, as well as piece 23, which is your back leg for your wide leg pants. So we're going to get those all cut out, making sure that we mark all of our notches as well as our dots, and then we'll get started. So we're going to start off with the front of our pants. 
making the pleats. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and connected um, all the broken lines on my pattern piece and just pinned it in place. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to take a straight stitch and stitch this down to the dot on both pleats. What I will then do is I will then press them towards the center front, basting the top edge. Do that to both fronts. So once you have pressed and based the top of your pleats, what you're going to do is you're going to take your pocket facing right sides together on um, the pants front, matching the single notches as well as the dots. And you're going to sew in between those dots. Once you have done that, you're going to um, trim the seam down, flip it in and top stitch it at a quarter of an inch. So now that the pocket facing is attached as well as top stitch at a quarter of an inch, we are now going to attach the yoke front or basically the other side of the pocket. The best way that I like to line this up is I usually go from the front, but it is up to you. So I always like to line it up just to see where everything lies. Similar to that on the back side, I am making sure that my notches match for my pocket and all my edges kind of match up. And we're going to take that and sew it up at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, you can also go ahead and um, finish this edge. So either zigzagging or surging um, this edge so that you will have a finished pocket. Once you have the pocket, done and created, we will start working on the back. So now looking at the back of the pants, this is wrong side up. What I've gone ahead and done is marked in my dart as well as the corners of what will become my welt pockets as well as my marks for my belt loops. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and stitch this dart starting at the top, sewing to the bottom. Um, making sure not to um, backstitch at the bottom, but tying off the dart down here. Um, and then we will go ahead and reinforce the corners of your pockets. Now, before you sew the dart in, you can see that it almost makes like a smiley line. Once you sew that dart in, it should uh, straighten back up. You can always um, just check it to make sure that you are on the right track. So we'll go ahead and sew this all in, and then I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and done my welt um, outlining. And instead of just boxing in the corners and reinforcing those, I like to go ahead and box out the whole box. I find that it helps me when I sew on the welt pocket and all the other pieces a little bit later. So now let's work on the actual welt piece. So you're gonna take um, one of your interface piece number 16s. We are going to fold it in half and I've already placed my little marks on here and I'm basically going to take it from the top and sew all the way down, um, making this little box. And we're gonna use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So once you have um, put together your welt and you basted it in place, what we're gonna now do is we're gonna place this on top of our, um, our line. We're gonna match our small dots with the corners and the edges of the box we created for the welt and the stitching line should match the stitching line of the welt itself. We're gonna base this in place and then this open edge at the top, we are going to trim down to a quarter of an inch. So now that we have the welt basted in place and the seam allowance trimmed, we're gonna focus on the pocket bag itself. So. What, they what we want you to do first is I made sure that I have, I used a heat transferable or heat erasable pen and just made my marks so I know where my dots are, where my welt is supposed to be on my pocket, as well as um, my placement line. And this is my lining fabric. As you can see, I decided to use um, the same fabric as the shirt, which was in my previous tutorial for view A of this pattern. So I like to, um, this is a fun way to tie in both pieces if you're planning to wear them together or you know just to use some fun fabric on the inside of your pants as your own little secret now we're going to uh, start focusing on our 
um, back pocket facing. So on the undotted edge, so we have, um, I made my two dots here. We are going to fold under a quarter of an inch and press that in place. If you don't feel like pressing it, um, you can also use a serger or anything like that. Once we have done that, we are going to um, place it on our actual pocket bag, matching up our dots and basting this in place. So once you have put your pocket, your back pocket facing on top of your pocket bag, you are going to put your pocket bag on top of your pants, right sides facing together. And we are then gonna go ahead and make sure that we're lining up our welts. So I made sure my markings for my welt is also in my pocket bag. And we are going to sew that welt in place. Now, what I like to do and what works for me, and you wanna use what works best for you, especially when sewing this box together with all these different layers, even though the welt is already sewn in place, I like to sew it from the back side because I've already made my, my box. So if I follow that box, it's easier for me to make sure that everything kind of lines up in place so that I can get a nice crisp um, welt when I'm done. So I'm gonna take this to my machine and sew it from the wrong side to sew in my box. So I will start my stitching right at the corner, the corner of the box and stitch all the way around. Now, all these extra markings is where I kind of started, but I always make sure I go ahead and follow the stitching line of the box I made, since that's kind of the permanent piece of the box itself for the welt. And we just take our time. I sink it in first if you have needle down, or you can use your hand wheel to sink your needle into that corner. Secure it, and we're just going to go up the stitching. And again, remember to take your time. There is no rush. Now, as you can see, I do have a pin here. It's on the other side. I use that just to hold everything in place, but I make sure that it's um, not in the line of stitching anywhere. But we're going to keep on going up here. Once we get to this corner, we're gonna sink our needle down again, lift up our foot, and turn our piece so that we can continue stitching. And then once you get back to the top of where you started, you can do one back stitch just to make sure that you are ending in the same place. Secure your thread and cut. So I've already started doing it here, but once you have sewn your box in place, you are then going to, I made a clip in the center and start to cut this open, cutting from the middle of the box. And then you're going to cut diagonally out to the corners of um, the box that you created, making sure you get to the stitching, but not through the stitching. So looking at this other side, we are going to go through the middle here and then go all the way up into those corners. And getting as close into that corner as possible is really what's going to help make sure that you have a nice, crisp box. So now, once you've done that, we can start to turn through our pocket. And then we're going to take it over to the iron and give it a good press. Making sure that, you know, you are pressing up this area here. And just making sure that you are pressing um, down all the different layers that are part of the project. So now that we've given it a good press, and actually I probably might go in before my next step and just make sure I'm clipped all the way down into these corners just to uh, take care of some of this little pucker room right there. But it's okay as well, especially if this is one of your first welt pockets. Do what works best for you. 
But what we're now going to do is we're going to secure the welt itself. So on either side, there should be a small triangle of fabric and we're going to sew down this edge and this edge. Once we have done that, we will then start folding our pocket in place. So from the other side, what it's going to look like is this. Now, to do this, what I like to do is I like to connect the top edge of my pocket as well, um, and then use a serger to close up my pocket itself. So we're gonna finish that part of the pocket up and then we'll be back. So to finish up our pocket, I went ahead and made sure that I uh, surged all the edges of my pocket together just so that there is um, no fraying or anything of the fabric at laundering. And you can go ahead then and baste the pocket close at the top just so that it holds it together and that there's no gaping um, as you are completing the trousers. Um, I just put a pin in it for right now. Now that we're done with that, we're going to sew the backs to the front at the side seams. So right here at the side seams using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you want to, you can go ahead and finish these edges first um, using a serger or zigzag stitch or anything like that, just so that you can um, capture some of this fraying, um, matching your notches and everything as you are sewing those together. So once you have sewn your side seams together, we'll start focusing on the zipper. So now we're gonna start on um, attaching our fly and our zipper. So the first thing I did was at the large dot here on the pattern, I went ahead and reinforced that with a line of stitching at that large dot and clipped to that line of stitching. That reinforced it um, just so that nothing is gonna fall apart and it's not also not going to stretch. Once we've done that, I also went ahead and took my left uh, fly piece and I did an edge, edge finish. I used a, um, just my serger, just to finish that edge. You can also um, do like a rolled hem. You can use some bias tape or anything like that to finish this. So now that we've done that, I'm going to match my notches as well as my large dot to my large dot. Right sides together. And we are going to stitch this on from the large dot up. And once we have done that, we are then going to trim this seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch from the large dot up. So now that the fly has been put on the pants front and we have pressed it out with the seam allowance going towards the fly itself, we are now gonna focus on attaching the first part of the zipper. So I've taken my zipper and I have shortened it. So I had to um, remove the teeth from the top by about one inch. Um, you can either do like a, some whip stitches at the top to make a new stopper, or I had some metal stoppers and I placed that on the zipper itself. Then I placed the zipper down, face down on top of um, the left fly, um, starting at the small dot at the top with the zipper tape um, along the edge of that seam here. And we are going to take it over to the machine using a zipper foot. And we are going to um, sew down the left side along here. So once you have sewn on the one side of the zipper, what you're then gonna do is you're gonna take this whole fly piece and fold it towards the outside. And then we're gonna start working on the waistband facing. The reason for this, which it seems a little bit out of order, is just so that we can make sure that everything lines up. So what we're gonna do is attach our um, interfaced left um, left side waistband facing. I've gone ahead and did an edge finish. I just used my serger to finish this edge, matching up the dots and notches and folded under around five eighths of an inch on the unnotched edge. So here's the notches, the three notches for the center back, 
This is the unnotched edge where I went ahead and folded back around uh, five eighths of an inch. We're now going to stitch this at the top here using a five eighths inch seam allowance. So once you have sewn on your waistband facing, go ahead and understitch it as far as possible. Where I did that here is I folded the um, seam allowance, everything is going up so that I can get as far as possible this way as possible. Um, and then we are going to take our actual fly and turn this out as well. So you would then go ahead and give this a good press just to put everything in place. And then before we move on to the other side, I want you to go ahead and do your top stitching for your fly here, as well as base everything in place as needed. So after going ahead and doing your top stitching here on your left fly, we're gonna start working on the right. So now to start working on the right, you wanna make sure that you fold under three eighths of an inch on this edge or at one centimeter. You're then going to abut that next to the zipper. And what you will notice is that your both of your large dots should line up and your left fly should overlap by about a quarter of an inch. And you can see all of this up here is that seam allowance. So what we're now going to do is we are going to baste the zipper in place. So this is not gonna be the final stitching, so you can use a larger stitch length or hand stitch this just to hold this in place as we go to our next step. So now let's work on the right fly underlay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take um, both of our pieces, remember there is a fly piece as well as a fly piece that's interfaced. We're gonna place them right sides together. And then we are going to sew. Um, it will be five eighths of an inch along the top seam. And then down this edge, it will be three eighths of an inch. Keeping the notched edge open. Once you have done that, you are going to uh, trim the sleeves, seams, clip your curves as well as your corners and turn it out and give it a press. So once we have pressed and turned out our underlap, I went ahead and um, closed off that notch edge using my serger. You can also use a zigzag stitch, um, but you're not turning anything under. So what we're now going to do is we're going to place this behind the basted right side. It should be like around a third of an inch overlap here just like that. And I always like to kind of close everything up, just to make sure everything lines up appropriately. And what we're now going to do is I'm going to pin this in place using my zipper foot. I'm going to uh, finally secure this edge using just a regular stitch. And then we will focus on the waistband facing. Once you have put the underlap in place and it's secured, like the facing on the left side, we're gonna do the same with the right. So I've interfaced and did a edge finish for the right hand facing, matching up the dots as well as the notches. I'm going to sew this at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. I have folded over the unnotched edge a bit so that we can secure it to the underlap once we're done. Once we're done stitching this on, we'll press the seam allowances up. We'll do another under stitch for the facing piece and we will slip stitch um, the end to the underlap to secure. So once your waistband is all squared away, we're now gonna start working on sewing up the pants. So we're gonna start um, putting together the inside leg seams. So I want you to match uh, front to back, matching your notches, um, stretching your back to fit your front. So there's usually more fabric in the back. So just make sure that they, they match at the edge. You're gonna sew down either side at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So now that you've done your inner leg seams, it is easiest to go ahead and press those open, um, or at least the top part, especially as we're about to do the crotch seam. So we're going to, um, I find it easier to put one leg inside the other with the right sides facing each other. And we're gonna start at the large dot um, by the fly making sure all the notches match. And we're going to sew all the way up the back, unfolding the facings so that we can get that as well. Once you have done that, um, we are gonna go back and especially in this area of high traffic, 
about a quarter of an inch in within the seam allowance, we're gonna do another line of stitching just to make sure that that has just an extra layer of protection. So we're gonna do that. You can go ahead and also um, press these seams open if you so choose. And then we'll come back and focus on the rest of the finishing. So overall, now your pants are all together. What we're going to do now is we're going to do our belt loops so that we can include that as part of our finishing of the pants. To do that, you want to take your belt loop piece and you're going to want to um, press it in half and then press each of the ends after you press it in half into half again so that all of your raw edges are kind of inside and you're going to do two rows of top stitching or along um, either edge so that we can then cut these into belt loops. Once they're cut into belt loops, you can then place them along the front and the back. And we can include that as part of our finishing. There is going to be some hand finishing that needs to happen. That includes uh, making sure that you just hand tack um, the edge of your waistbands all together along this edge and this edge. You want to also hand tack your waistband at the back as well as at the side seams. Once you have put your belt loops on, you're also gonna wanna make sure you put your buttonhole, your button, and your hook and bar before going to the front and making sure that you add a bar tack right here at the bottom of your zipper and then go to hem. So for these, which are the tapered versions, the option to hem these is to um, turn them up a quarter of an inch and then turn again. And you can either do um, a hand blind hem, a blind hem stitch, or even top stitch these down. For the wide leg versions, um, you can also do a cuff and that is provided within the pattern. And with that, you have finished view C of Know Me and Me 2018. And there we have it. We're done with ME 2018, you see, which are our high-waisted Hollywood waist tailored trousers. I hope you enjoyed this so along and learned something to take on to your next sewing project, especially if you're continuing on with your pants making journey. I would love to see all the different things that you've made. So make sure to tag uh, me, Julian Creates, on all platforms, but also use hashtags KnowMePatterns as well as hashtag ME2018 just so that I can see all the things that you make. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on social media. And I hope, if nothing else, that you keep creating. So until next time, talk to you later.